Okay, so you have requested I make a video about binomial expansion. Yeah, this is a weird topic and I am not even gonna say that it's easy because it is absolutely not. Wait, I'm just reframing the camera. There we go. Yeah, it's not an easy topic. Um, There's some weird concepts to get around, some weird formulas to use. So I'm going to see if I can help you with that. Now, it is hard. It's a very hard topic. But basically, the binomial expansion helps you to expand a plus b to the n. So, basically, if we were to start with a plus b, and we're going to raise it to power of 2, that's going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, if we try a plus b cubed, that's going to be this squared, or this, sorry, this, to the multiplied by that, so you're going to get a cubed plus 2a squared b plus a b squared plus a cubed b plus, not a cubed b, sorry, a squared b plus 2ab squared, <laughs> and as you see it goes on and on, 2ab squared plus b cubed, and you can simplify that into a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. So, obviously if you're in an exam situation you do not want to be writing all that out, especially when it gets up to powers like it. So, using the formula book, because let's be real, this is one of the opportunities to use the formula book. It says that a plus b to the n is equal to a to the n plus nr. Let's say nr to the nx. Okay, so it's an nr, but it replaces r with 1. n1 times a n minus 1 b plus n2 a n minus 2 b 2 and you can kind of see a pattern uh, starting to emerge plus da -da -da -da. you can kind of see the pattern so you start out with a to the n n minus 1 n minus 2 b 0 b 1 b 2 etc but now you see these weird brackety things you may be wondering what on earth are these bracket things? Like n1. So the n obviously relates to that. The 1. Basically, if we call this position 0, this position 1, this position 2, next one position 3, etc. That gives you that. And this comes from nr, where r is your position thing. n0 will always equal 1. So we're multiplying it by 1, which means we don't use it. NR and NR is the same thing as NCR, which is just another way of writing NR. But there is a formula for NR, which I don't like to use. You can type it into your calculator, however, formula is N factorial over R factorial N minus R factorial. So, for example, if you're reading something with power of 8 and you wanted to work out the coefficient of the fifth thing, it would be 5 factorial, exclamation mark just means factorial, 5 factorial over, sorry, 8 factorial over 5 factorial multiplied by 8 minus 5 factorial. It's quite complicated, however, we'll be using that later. But, to start off with, we will look at the easiest form of the binomial expansion, if you get a question like this, it's great. It's going to be the 1 plus x to the n, which is, I mean, the same form as a plus b, except it's just 1 plus x. And the great thing about this is there is very little multiplication needed. So it's just going to be 1 plus... Remember, it's just like... You need your NCR, so I'm going to write N1X plus N2 
x squared plus dot dot dot. That is kind of it. And you keep on going. It, it is a weird thing. Like, it's a really weird thing. And I don't really like it because it's so weird. However, you got to stick with it. So, let's get on to an actual question. I did have a good one. Where was my good question? That was a good one. Hello? Let me find my good question. Okay, so if the question is... In the expansion, 1 plus x to the 7, and it wants us to work out what the coefficient of x to the power 4 is. So, we want to work out x to the power 4. Now, as you can kind of see, that's the power, that's the power, just happens to be in the 1 plus x one. So we know that we're going to have to use n r remember it's going to be 1 to the whatever so 1 to the n minus whatever and then x to the 4 because that's what we're looking for however because anything to the power of or 1 to the power of anything is itself except yeah 1 to the power of anything itself just x to the 4 n we're looking for to the power of 7 and then r is 4 x to the 4, and then if you type 7, 4 into your calculator, you get 35x4, and remember, the so this is actually going to be 1 to the power of 3, 4, because these two numbers here must add up to make 7. And that's the power we start off with, so yeah, that's fun fact. Those are like the nice questions, the nice easy ones that you really want to get in your exam, however, there are a lot more complicated ones that we're going to move on to. So let's try 1 minus 3x to the power of 6. And we are looking for x cubed. So we're looking for the coefficient of x cubed, the number before x cubed. So n is 6. We're looking for the third one. Remember, this is going to be 1 to the 3 multiplied by minus 3x cubed. So what you're going to do, obviously, that's just 1. So and minus 3 cubed is minus 27. And you're going to multiply 27 by 63. And 63, you can work out in your calculator just by type, literally typing in 63 or by typing in 6 factorial over 3 factorial multiplied by 6 minus 3 all factorial this equals minus 540x cubed now obviously if you actually expanded that out you could get you would get the same thing so you would get 1 times 1 then 1 times minus 3x to 6 then you know multiplying it out normally multiplying it out squaring it then doing it again and again but much easier to use this method and much quicker as weird as it might be okay let's move on to a slightly different one you're just going to have to remember to keep all your numbers really okay so say we wanted to find the expansion of 2 plus x raised to the power of 5 we would start off with our 2 to the power of 5 then I'm not going to use brackets because that takes too long. 5, we're, we're now in position 1, remember that's position 0. 2 to the power of 4, take 1 off the power, times x to the 1. You can put an imaginary 1 there if you want. But I'm using multiplication as a dot because it's just quicker. 5, 2, 2, 3 times x, 2, we're now in position 2. Plus 2, 4, I forgot about this, I do this every single time. 5, 3. It's just if I take a new row, I always forget about this. 2, 4. And not even 2, 4. It's 2, 2. Times x, 3. So we're position 3. Then it is 5, 4. 2 times x, 4. And finally, x to the 5. 
Now you want to. Oh, that's slightly out of. Now you are going to want to work out what all these things are. So I'm going to show you with the calculator. Uh, let me see. I want option probability and then NCR. That's what we're using. That is going to be 5. C1 gives us 5. 5, for example, 5C2 gives us 10. And you're just going to multiply those by the, the 2 with the power to get all the things. So this is going to be equal to 32 plus 80x plus 80x squared plus 40x cubed plus 10x to the 4 plus x to the 5. And that is what you get whenever you expand that entire thing. Now this, these do take quite a while, so if you get one of those, you know, you will be spending quite a while on it. But just remember that, that it is fine to be spending quite a while on those types of questions, because they are difficult. Then you can get more confusing questions, like some weird ones, like 3... 3x plus 2y and we're doing oh it's cubed and we want to write out the full expansion. So it's going to be 3x cubed but remember the 3 is also cubed. Then, ooh, then 3 1 3x squared 2y plus 3 2 3x 2y squared plus 3 3 which is equal to 1 so 2y cubed sorry I should really put this one in brackets too rather than rewrite the 3 if you put it in brackets it makes the multiplication of everything so much easier then you multiply everything together and you get 27x cubed plus 54x squared y plus 36xy squared plus 8y cubed. And that is the complete expansion of that bracket. So as you see, they're getting slightly harder you're getting more things added, you know, if something, uh, if it's like something minus something, make sure you put the minus in the bracket. I can't be bothered to do one of those <laughs> because they just take too long. So now I'm going to go into some like exam questions. Those could come up, however, they're not as, they're not like the normal kinds of question. So here's a question and it is right the first four terms in descending powers of x. So we want to write first four terms of x over 2 plus 3 power of 7. Can you see that? Yes, you can. So, remember we want to write out the first four terms. So we're going to write out 1, 2, 3, 4 bits. Like four bits of the thing. So, our first one is going to be x over 2 to the 7 plus 7, 1, x over 2, the 6, remember we're multiplying this by 3 this time, plus 7, 2, x over 2, the 5, 3 squared, am I going up? Am I running up? I am running up, let's see if I can adjust this then for you. There we go. Plus... 7, 3, x over 2, 4, 3, cubed, 
plus dot 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 because obviously there's more to the expansion but we just want the first four terms one two three four so this is zero term one term two term three term and those are the first four then you just have to multiply it out and you get x to the power of 7 over 128 plus 21x to the power of 6 over 64 plus 189x to the power of 5 over 32 plus 945x to the 4 over 16 and obviously there's more however those are the first four terms that you were asked for in the question. As you can see, they get pretty weird. Like, they get really weird. There's a lot of multiplication being done. But as long as you keep track of your numbers, also you see this x part or descending, which is what the question asked for. But yes, that is a weird one. What other questions? Oh, okay. Here's a great question, actually. So... It, <laughs> yes, it is, it's finding numbers to decimal places using binomial expansion, which is, I think it's a really weird concept, however, they seem to like answering it. So, we are going to go for 2.98 power of 8 to 2 decimal places. And this is going to be equal to, are you ready for this? 2.98 is equal to 3 minus 2 times 0 0.01, so that is equal to 2.98. So, 3 minus 2.01, it can be done with a binomial expansion because you've got two things. But we can replace this first with x, so 2 x, 8, and we want it to two decimal places, which means you're going to need to have three, for two decimal places, you're going to need four terms, pretty much. Always go the extra bit so that you can then round up properly. And also the first term is going to be three to the power of eight. So... Yeah, you don't want, that's not going to give you any decimal places. So bring it to four, so you've got three with decimal places, or two with decimal places, and then an extra one to round up. So we want the first four parts of this. It's going to be three to the eight, plus eight, one, minus two, x. And also, I forgot about the three, seven. Plus eight, two, three, six, Minus 2x squared plus 8, 3, 3, 5, minus 2x cubed. That is as far as we want to go. We have four terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, yes. And then whenever you multiply that out, using your calculator, of course, you get 6, 5, 6, 1, minus 3, 4. 992x plus, as you see, these numbers are pretty big, 816, 48x squared plus 1088, 64x cubed, and it goes on. So then, if we, if we fill in 0.21, to each of the x's, multiply it out, add them all up, you get 6219.14, and that is me rounding up. So yeah, it's a pretty big number, but if you were to type it into your calculator, you know, that is what you're actually going to get. That Like, that is... Your number, so if I was to type in here, 2.98 to the power 8, 619.136, and obviously we rounded that up to 14. 
Because that's what two decimal places. So that's a pretty accurate way of, of raising stuff to big powers. But then we get into weird, like really weird questions. There are two really weird questions I want to do. Let's do this one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, these, someone actually requested this type of question, like this type of question, just. So I'll do that then. So we have one minus a the x to the power of n. The first three terms of this are one minus 30x plus 405x squared. And it wants you to find the value of a and to find the value of n. So let's write, let's expand this as far as x squared. So you get one minus n1, <laughs> n1, so multiplying this by one to the power of n minus one, but that's fine, not, doesn't exist, or you don't need to put it here because it just equals one, minus ax, then we're going to be, let's do plus, plus n2, and then we're multiplying this by minus ax squared. And we know that this equals one minus 30x plus four or five x squared. And then we have two simultaneous equations because we have this and we have this, which relates to that and that. N one minus ax is equal to minus 30 x. We can take out the x's because they're obviously going to be the same. So n1 minus a is 30 and if you use Pascal's triangle you can see that in the first position it is all so n1 is always equal to n. Oh, it's n1 there, that's n1 there. So we can think about this simply as n, but it's not n minus a, it's minus a n because you're multiplying them. So you're minus 30. Nice. So then what we can do is we're able to work out what a is. So that is nice to use. So then to get the second one, we have n2, and that is a squared, because obviously not squared. So we have n2 a squared equals 405. We've just removed the x's there. And then what you can do is divide by a squared to get n2 by itself. And then if, well, if you do something pretty cool and you equate, you put, rip pen lid, you put a in there. So a squared is equal to 30 squared is 900. Divide that by n squared, put that in, n2 is equal to 405n squared over 900. So basically, we've just worked out what n over 2 is equal to, but to get n, or how do you get n? That is basically what we need to work out now. So this is where, this is literally one of the only places where I will ever use the formula book. Because the formula book tells us that for the for the x squared term n upon n minus one over 
1 times 2, not 1.2, that's 1 times 2, this equals n2. And we can use that to work out our x squared part, or our x squared coefficient, but we can equate them, do all the math stuffs. So, the next step, let's go back up to here, the next step is n squared minus n over 2 equals 405n squared over 900. So then 900n squared minus 900 equals 405 times 2. What did I even do? I've, I've already done these questions just because, I mean... Kind of, you kind of need to have done these. Oh yeah, and that's actually an equal to 9 squared over 20, if you were to simplify that. But guess who forgot to simplify? Me! Let's simplify that quickly, because... Let's, let's be honest, simplified things are much easier. 9n squared over 20. Then, if you bring that up, you get 18. Then divide by... 20, like divide by 2 and you get 10. So kind of simplify that out then. 10n squared minus 10 equals 9n squared. n squared minus 10 equals... That should be an n, sorry. Minus 10, n equals 0. n minus 10 equals 0. n equals 10, also n equals 0, but n cannot equal 0, because it has to be greater than 1. So we have worked out that n equals 10, and there you go, there is the entire solution. That is a very confusing question, but obviously the next part is work out what a is. However, a is very easy to work out, because we know that there goes the lid again, wow. A equals 30 over N. 30 over 10. Let's actually go down to where I'm writing. A equals 3. And that is, that actually is the entire question working out what A and N are. And you could do the expansion now and check. However, I know it's the right answer because I have the answer. Like, I actually have the answer. But yeah, as you, these que these questions are quite tiring. Like, oh, okay. Last question. Last question, and I'll send you on your way. Hopefully, having a better understanding of a binomial. So, and you remember, you just kind of do the same thing over and over again, and get and hope you get the right answer. But the more you practice, especially binomial, the more you practice, the more you'll get it. So. In the expansion, 1 plus ax to the 12th power. Uh, are, you, are you all ready for this? Right, hold on. Let's reframe, reframe. I'll just write down then. x6, so the, the coefficient of x6 is 7 times bigger than the coefficient of x5, so remember it's the coefficients we're talking about, work out what a is. And whenever I first saw this question I was like what on earth is this question asking? So remember the coefficients of x6 is 7 times bigger than the coefficient of x5. And I put that fat 7, that should be, it's 7 times as large as that one. So, find a. Well if we cut straight in at x to the 6 and x to the 5. Remember it's n r and r is the row number. But r is also equal to the, the coefficient or the power of x because it starts in 0 and goes up just like the row numbers do. So we're going to have 12 6 a x 6 is equal to 7 because it's 7 times larger. That is 7 times larger than this. 12, 5, ax, 
5. And then, if you were to multiply it out, and obviously because the x's are there, you can you actually just can get one x, like x over one left over, because you can divide two by x. However, let's first multiply it out. Nine hundred twenty-four a x six is equal to five five four four a x part five. Then what you can do is simply divide. So if you divide, if you divide like that, you get, I can't even remember how I did this last time. If you divide through like that, you get 924 over 5544. 124 divided by 55, I typed that in wrong, 5544, which is equal to 1 sixth. One sixth x. What have I done? I've done something weird. Oh, that's what it is. Forgot to multiply the a's. Okay, 1 sixth x a. Is equal to 1, then you can just divide through the other way, like divide back, and you get a is equal to 6. That's just dividing back. Remember the x's are the same. So when you divide back, you get x equals 6, or what you could have done is divide it over that way, like leave the x's and just keep the a's. And you get a equals 6. The x's just disappear because the x is the same in both. But yeah, that is how you do that question. That is the weirdest question I've ever seen. And I did not like that question very much at all. However, that's the correct answer. That's how you do it. Job done, in my opinion. Yes, but you really can just get rid of the x because it's not necessary here. That can kind of all just disappear. But yeah, job done. So that is all I've got time for today. This video has actually drained me so much. So if you did like this video, make sure you hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if it's helpful. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.